let's see, can you see it? This is me being sworn in. Henry Fry is, by anyone's definition, a successful man. Put in a special bill uh, for $30 million for five schools, which now looks like a penny, I guess. But back in those days, $30 million would have been a good, uh, good thing. A UNC Law School graduate, Air Force veteran, U.S. attorney, state legislator, and finally, the first black chief justice of North Carolina's Supreme Court. I didn't always succeed, but uh, I felt that it was worth trying. And at that time, uh, frankly, it was a lot of segregation based on, purely based on race. Oh, Shirley and I had been dating, and I said, what about pitting me? And of course, she accepted graciously. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that sort of uh, cement in our relationship. 88-year-old Fry's eyes light up when he speaks about his bride of 64 years. Well, the big thing that day was I was on my way to Greensboro to get married to the lady who is still my wife. But it was on his wedding day that he faced one of the dark moments in our nation's history. My wife, this is the lady that I married on August 25th, 1956. And that was the date that uh, I was denied the right to vote. Fry was victim to what is known as the literacy test, a common practice used, especially in the South, to discriminate who would and would not be allowed to vote. The uh, person who was uh, the registrar uh, started asking me questions, uh, like name the 14th, something about the 14th Amendment, or name so certain signers of the uh, Declaration of Independence, and just, uh, and I said, why in the world are you asking me all these questions? He said, they're right here in the book. I said, well, I think all I have to do is be able to read and write a section to the Constitution to the satisfaction of the register. He said, these are right here in the book, and he reached on his desk and pulled out a book. The literacy tests weren't really just checking if someone could read or write. In many cases, they were meant to be confusing and difficult to understand. Books like this one from the early 1900s were put together in an effort to help black men study for literacy tests. A lot of information to memorize, and sometimes not at all what was asked during the testing. Under the 15th Amendment in the late 1800s, black men were given the right to vote in our country. But soon after, many states in the South started enacting what were known as grandfather clauses, which often exempted white males from having to take the test. Do you have any business in the courthouse? The only business we have was to come by to the Board of Registers to register. But aimed at stopping former slaves and their families from registering. This march will not continue. Nearly 80 years after black men were given the right to vote, only 3% of them in the South actually had gotten registered. Scenes like the one that played out in 1965 on Bloody Sunday in Alabama became synonymous with the fight for the ability of black men to vote. It was a Jim Crow law to keep certain people from voting, and, and now we need to repeal that to be a appropriate. It may surprise you to find out that if you flip through North Carolina's Constitution, the requirement for literacy tests is still there, saying you must be able to read and write to be able to vote. Because people believe you ought to be informed as a voter, you ought to be able to read and write, and that's not what that literacy test was about to begin with. Representative Sarah Stevens is helping to lead the charge to put a constitutional amendment before voters to formally repeal the literacy test and to take it out of the Constitution. The problem is, that was already tried once back in 1970, and it failed. So there's still some hesitancy today. Why put it out there and embarrass ourselves again with having it fail just because people don't understand it? I, I certainly think it ought to be out of the Constitution. The question is whether or not uh, we can successfully uh, uh, get there this time. Phil Berger leads the state Senate. 
that chamber is often more conservative about the number of constitutional amendments it believes should be considered. He points out that through the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and a Supreme Court decision, the literacy test is already defunct, but says even with some confusion by the general public, he understands why many folks want the language gone. He has tried this before and failed. Talk to the average person in North Carolina and ask them, uh, they, they probably would say, well, yeah, that makes sense. The problem is, uh, the, in the past, that language has been used uh, in ways that have prevented folks who actually could read uh, to, uh, uh, to, to actually be able to vote. And uh, that history uh, is something that, uh, that, that we uh, need to make sure that we don't find a way to replicate. Could you read and write? Uh, and uh, it was a simple test, uh, and, but it was used to discriminate. Fry was an NC a &T graduate when he failed the literacy test. He says if he had been asked to read and write, he would have been granted the right to vote back on that day in 1956. But he says the objective that day was to discriminate, and there was nothing he could do. I said, you don't have any doubt that I'm a a citizen of Richmond County uh, because I've been living in New York for a while. He said, oh, no, no, I know your family. And, and he went on to name my mother and father. <laughs> and I said, but why don't you let me go ahead and register? He said, you didn't answer the questions.